Good morning, Velocity. All right, you got to stand up. We're going to sing. It says, people come together. Strange as neighbors, our blood is one. People come together. Strange as neighbors, our blood is one. Children, generations of every nation of kingdom come. Don't let your heart. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up. I don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where help comes from. Oh, 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 Jesus, our redemption. Jesus, our redemption, our salvation is in his blood. Jesus, light. Jesus, light of heaven, friend forever, his kingdom come. Don't let your heart, so don't let your heart be trouble hold your head up i don't fear no evil fix your eyes on this one truth god is madly in love with you so take courage hold on be strong remember where help comes from I hope you guys are awake. This part says, swing wide, all you heavens. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. Let's we'll sing it out. Swing wide. Swing wide, you heavens. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath. We greet the sound. All is children.
salvation is in his blood. Jesus, light of heaven. Jesus, light of heaven. Friend forever, his kingdom come. Come on, let's give him some praise in here this morning. Lord, we love you. Welcome to Velocity. If there's somebody you know or somebody you don't know across the room, will you give them an air high five? You know, because that's the most sanitary way we do things. If you know somebody well enough, you can hug them. Well, that's up to you. That is not promoted from this platform, but you know, you do what you want to do. Welcome here. If you're a guest with us, thank you so much for being here with us today. Let's continue in worship. carried a burden I've carried a burden for too long on my own I wasn't created to bear it alone I hear your invitation I hear your invitation let it all go and I see it now I'm laying it down and I know that I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding no reason to wait my heart needs a surgeon my soul needs a friend so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, oh, oh. You saw my condition, had a plan from the start, your son. Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace, done with the hiding, the reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I run to the Father again and again and again and again. So I run to 
Father, this morning, no matter where we come from, no matter our past, no matter our sin, you asked us to forgive our brother if they sinned against us even seven times over and seven times over and seven times over because that was a reflection of your forgiveness towards us. So Lord, every time we fall, every time we stumble, we run right back to you every single time. No fear of condemnation. With open arms, you're there to greet us and we are so grateful for that. Lord, thank you for this time we can have together this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said a good amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Good morning. My name is Josepha and welcome to Velocity. Here's a few things we'd like for you to know. On December 10th, we'll be having our ladies craft night from 6.30 to 8.30 in the Welcome Center. Join in for a fun night of fellowship and a holiday themed craft. Join us Friday, December 11th at 7 p.m. for Christmas at Velocity. This is a Christmas concert and a carol sing-along. You don't want to miss it. We hope to see you guys there. If you'd like to turn in a prayer request or an offering, you can turn those in in our secure given boxes located in the back of the Worship Center or the Welcome Center. Here at Velocity, there's several ways for you to get connected. Stop by Connect Central at the end of the service and fill out one of our Dream Team cards and find out how you can get involved. You can stay up to date with everything that's happening at Velocity by texting Velocity SC to the number on the screen. Once again, we're so glad you joined us this morning. Welcome to church. all my life. Job here. There's someone here that's going through something astronomical in their life. God says to praise him. So this morning when we sing this, I want you guys to just lift your hands and celebrate the goodness of God. Because even in a terrible season or whatever you're going through, God is there. So let's sing this morning about his goodness. Believe it and you will receive it. Your goodness. This 
is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, is running after. vision and our purpose behind our posture of worship. And we've talked about this before, our engagement in worship, that when we sing, we sing songs that, that have lyrics like, it's your breath in our lungs, so you deserve every breath. I'm gonna give you every breath I breathe, every lyric I sing, every word I say. This song we taught last week, and this says, I'm gonna lift my hands till I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name. And it says, I'm gonna sing my song 
till the walls come falling down. I'm going to shout your name till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship. And my question to you is, is if we did not come to worship, then what for? I've left many Sunday services as empty as I walked in the room, and God had nothing to do with that. It had to do with my openness, my heart, my calloused heart, my mind, my nerves, my anxiety, my attention going somewhere else. And I want to challenge you here that in this moment, if for not any other song, this moment that we lean in, that we listen to the voice of God, that we participate with a posture of worship. If you've never left your, lifted your hands before, I want to challenge you to lift your hands. If you, if you say, that's just not me, then you do you, and let's experience and have an encounter with the one and only God. This song says, I've come to worship. I'm gonna lift my hands and I can reach heaven, I'm gonna show your name Till the walls come falling down I've come to worship, I've come to worship I'm gonna sing my song Like I am unashamed I'm gonna shout for joy at the mention of your name I've come to worship I've come to
God is here. He is here. And standing in the back just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that we get to worship in freedom this morning. Thank you, God. What a holiness. I just want to, I just want to bow down and worship him. I don't know what you came expecting this morning, but I'm going to encourage you to expect from God. Expect him to show up in your life. Expect him to do great things. Expect him to expect him to heal you if you need to be healed. Expect him to, to talk to you. Expect, expect him to, to forgive you. Ask for forgiveness. You know, the song before this one talked about the goodness of God is running after me. I love hearing that the goodness of God is running after me. Because with all the different things we face, many times we forget that the goodness of God, he's running after me. He's pursuing me. He loves me. And the same goes for you. And Satan's always throwing all these distractions saying that you can't do it. It's not going to make it. Wait, God doesn't love you. No, it's the, it's the complete opposite. God is running after you. The goodness of God is always running after you because you're his most precious creation. Whatever you've gone through this week or maybe even this past year, it's been a crazy year, hasn't it? But you know what? The goodness of God is always running after you. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly what you've been thinking. He knows all those different things going on. We're going to talk about some of that this morning. But the goodness of God is here right now. And it would be really bad to leave these doors and not get what God wants you to get today. And he deserves our praise. He deserves our thanks. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's just give God thanks. Let's just thank Him for how great He is. Father, You are such an amazing God. We thank You that we can worship. We thank You that we get to praise You. God, we thank You for the talent that we have here. We thank You for the people that are using their talents to serve in many, many capacities here at Velocity. We thank You for that. We thank You for friendships that are made. We thank You for encouragement. God, we thank you. Thank you for the, the hugs or the high fives or the smiles. God, we thank you that we're able to get out of bed this morning. We thank you that we're able to breathe today. We thank you that you are God and that you love us. And you'll meet us right where we're at. We don't have to be perfect because you are. God, we, we sense the holiness in this place. We welcome you here in every part of everything we do. May it be less of us and more of you. God, I pray you'd open hearts and minds. I pray whatever needs to take place today, salvations today, people getting focused on you, maybe it's addictions that are laid at your feet, maybe it's realizing how much you love how much you love each individual. I don't know. There's a lot of different needs and all those folks that are, that are here with us got online. Those who later on will listen. God, I ask for your favor and your blessing. I ask for your will to be done here at Velocity in every area. We give you praise and thanks because you are God and you are worthy and you are the I am. Such an amazing God love you, we thank you, we honor you, we ask all these things in Jesus' name, and all the people said, amen. Man, what a sweet time of worship. Ooh, I think we can just go home right now. <laughs> Man, thank you, Jesus. Don't you love when God just shows out? And if you didn't receive that or you didn't sense that today, sense that, then I'm going to ask you to expect God. Maybe you didn't. Maybe, maybe your morning was so crazy you said, I don't know what you're talking about, Reggie. I want you to expect God. I want you to expect God to do something in your life. I think many times we don't, we don't see the things that God wants to do in our lives because we're not expecting, because we're so consumed with all the different things that are, that are going on in our lives. And I was thinking about that for this message because I, I thought, for me, this is the most wonderful time of year. This is, this is like from here all the way through Christmas. 
And then I gear up for, for a brand new new year as well. Okay? But right here, right now, why is that? Because I love that the leaves, they're still falling. Most of them are gone, but I love the colors. I love this time of year. Things get a little cooler. I know some of you, some of you guys don't like that. I love it. I love it that Thanksgiving is this coming Thursday, and that's going to be awesome. I love it that, that people in my neighborhood are already decorating for Christmas and Thanksgiving hasn't even come yet. I don't know if that happens with you. And I know some of you say, well, you got to have Thanksgiving. Yeah, absolutely. But I love it that some people decorate a little ahead of time. I love it that Christmas is coming, and it's another time to get with family. It's, an, it's, just, it's just a wonderful time of the year. It really is. You get all those Christmas movies. We've already started watching Christmas movies. There's just so many of them. It's a wonderful life. Oh, every, every year you got to see that, right? you got to see The Grinch or maybe four versions of The Grinch. That's really good. There's so many things. I also understand that during this time of this holiday season, it can be very stressful. And I know some people, they get really, really stressed, and some of you are stressing right now because maybe of the, the financial demands. You're thinking, how am I going to pay for what I've got to get, what I've got to do? When I understand it's 62% of people describe their stress level as very or somewhat elevated during this time. And there's actually a council that was put together, and they did this study, and they said that on stage one of the stress begins on December the 13th, and another stage is December the 18th, and then they actually label this thing called festive stress. Then they said that it peaks on December the 25th, and it goes all the way, and they even got it down to the time. They said up to 2.05 p.m., and then you realize it's almost over. <laughs> you say, is that, is that really that stressful? Well, for some people it is. So I was actually looking a little bit further and thought, well, why is it so stressful for so many people? Well, gift shopping. you gotta, you got to start thinking about who you're going to get gifts for, right? So for many people, 56% of the people say gift shopping is very stressful. There's crowds and lines, 54%. Black Friday is already upon us. Do you all realize that? I mean, I go to Walmart the other day, and I said, this got to be like, what is, is this Black Friday? And they said, sure enough, it is. There were so many lines, I mean, so many people, the lines were so long, you, it, it just felt like Christmas already. And then some of you got to get your house clean, right? Because everybody's coming over. For like, it's like 45% it had to do with cleaning. You gotta, everything's got to be perfect. Knowing what to get people. you got to make sure you get that right gift. It's 38%. Cooking. Some of you got to cook. Or at least if you don't cook, maybe you want to go buy something. You want to make sure you buy the right kind of thing. 36%. And some of you didn't said, Reggie, I didn't know it was that stressful. <laughs> but it is. It can be. For many, many people because there's so many different families. And some of you, there's this, this pressure to have the perfect Thanksgiving or the perfect Christmas. The perfect, everything's got to be, you know, and they would put a percentage on all that. And then you say, well, maybe that's not as stressful for me, Reg, but there's other things. I started thinking about what about people's physical pain or people's emotional pain. Physically, there's this one guy every time I see him, how you doing? And he's got chronic back pain. I mean, it's like... Horrible, and he deals with it. And we talk about it, and we pray for him. But every time I see him, he has a chronic pain. And he said, it's just something I learned to deal with. He has a chronic pain. Some of you, it's emotional pain. Maybe, maybe you've just recently gone through a, um, something. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a relationship heartache. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's, and you can just keep going emotionally. Maybe it's a job situation. Maybe it's a financial situation. I could continue to go the rest of the morning, and everybody has some kind of need. Everybody here has some kind of stuff that we're going through that you go, man, I need help in this particular area. And if I were to have you raise your hands, I would say almost everybody should raise their hand because everybody's got something that's going on. And many times we often feel that that pain goes unnoticed, that need goes unnoticed, but Jesus is well aware of all of our suffering, and he comes to walk beside us even in the middle of it. And so today we're going to take a look at Luke chapter 7, how Jesus responds to the pain. He responds, responds to the need. And there's a miracle in Jesus' ministry that teaches us how he responds to the pain and to the need in this particular situation and to the people that encounter him. And I love this story. And I had never heard of this town. I, I know I've read it many times, but I, this is one that just settled in. And, and it says, let's just start Luke chapter 7, verse 11 says, Soon afterwards, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain. N-A-I-N. I thought that's an interesting town. And a large crowd followed him. That's pretty huge to think about that. You go a little bit further. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. And the young man who had died was a widow's only son. 
And a large crowd from the village was with her. Notice there are two large crowds. you got Jesus with the disciples, and he's got a crowd following behind him. And he comes to the village gate, and there he meets with a, a funeral procession that's going on. And this lady, who's a widow, her, her young son has died. And so now she has a crowd behind her, and they come together. They meet at this, just happened to intersect at this particular point. And so then the Lord, what happens next? It says, when the Lord saw her. When the Lord saw her. And I want you to stop right there because Jesus responds several different ways to brokenness. And maybe you're feeling broken this morning. Then this was the place for you to come. And if you've never felt broken, then somewhere in life, I can assure you, there will be a crisis in your life. And many times when those crises take place, it's when many people are looking to Jesus. But if you came today and you're feeling broken or, or broken hearted, then we can understand and look at how does Jesus respond to brokenness. Jesus sees your need. Jesus always sees your need. In fact, Jesus always sees you. Because it says, when the Lord saw her. When the Lord saw her. How do we know that Jesus sees other people? So I started looking up verses to find that I could find. Where does Jesus see other people? I'm just going to read to you a few of them. So listen, listen closely. It says in John chapter 5, verse 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been given a, been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you wish to get well? In Matthew 9, verse 36, seeing the people. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Mark chapter 3, 5, it says, After looking around at them, after looking around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. Mark chapter 10, verse 21 says, Looking at him, Jesus felt a love for him, and he said to him, One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Mark 10, 23, and Jesus, looking around, said to his disciples, how hard will it be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God? One more I'll give you, Mark 10, 27. Looking at them, Jesus said, with people it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. So I'm going to ask you this morning, do you believe that Jesus sees you? And if you don't, I want you to understand, Jesus sees you, and he sees you exactly where you're at, and he sees your need. He knows your need. That's why I started earlier that God put on my heart that the goodness of God is running after me. The goodness of God is running after you, and he sees you. I think many times we feel that nobody sees us, that people don't see our need. I remember when I was growing up in elementary school, one of the things that I used to do when the teacher was boring, <laughs> I would think about how cool it would be if I was the invisible man. And I thought, if I was invisible, what would I do? People couldn't see me. I'd go over to other people's desk, and I'd see what they were, had written on their paper. Or I would go up to the teacher and look at her notes and see what she was doing. I remember as kids, we used to have super, certain superheroes, and I thought, how cool it would be if I was the invisible man. That would just be so neat, because I could just go everywhere, and nobody would know where I'm at. The invisible man. Some of you today feel like the invisible man or woman or an invisible kid, and you're thinking, nobody sees me. Nobody sees my need. Well, I want you to get that God sees you, and he sees your need. He notices you. He notices everything about you. And I believe, and I know by God's word, that he says he loves us, he loves you, and you're his most precious creation. Out of everything that's been created, he sees you. Make it personal. You could even say in your mind, he sees me. Isn't that, isn't that comforting to know that God sees us? So when he saw this lady, because we got two crowds here, the crowd behind him, we got the funeral procession going on, he sees the lady, his heart overflowed with compassion. His heart overflowed. Can you imagine Jesus and Jesus, how big his heart is, and his heart's overflowing, his heart's overflowing with compassion to her, and he says, don't cry. My first thought was, what do you think that lady's response was thinking? This, here's a guy, he's telling me don't cry and I just lost my son. I'm a widow and I just lost my son. Don't cry. That just doesn't make sense. No, but he says don't cry, but his heart overflowed with compassion. So he felt what, what was going on with her. He felt that. In fact, Jesus feels our pain. He feels your pain. Jesus feels your pain. Whatever need you have today, whatever pain you're going through, Jesus feels your pain. Sympathy, I looked up sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is feeling pain for someone. Sympathy is feeling pain for someone. Empathy is feeling pain with someone. And Jesus offers us both. Empathy is feeling pain with someone. 
So he says, don't cry, and I love this. He walked over to the coffin, and he touched it. And the, the bearers, they had pallbearers then. <laughs> now, I was thinking about all that today. What if that were to happen today? And before I go any further, I want to read to you how Jesus feels your pain. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, he says, We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. He's been through weakness, and he's been through testing. He's experienced it all, all but the sin. So let's walk right up to him and get what is, he is so ready to give. And take the mercy and accept the help. What if every one of us in this room, we walked right up to God and we would get what God is ready to give us and we would take the mercy and we would receive his help? Some of you are going through pain. When's the last time you asked God for help? When's the last time you said, God, I really need your help in this situation? God, I really need your help being a parent. God, I really need your help being the, the spouse that you want me to be. God, I really need your help with this financial situation. God, I really need your help with this pain. God, I really need your help in this relationship. And what if we, every one of us went up to God and said, God, I need your help. I receive, I take the mercy, I accept your help, and I understand that the goodness of God is running after me. So I looked up several verses just to find what does God say about and how, does, how do I know God feels my pain? It says in Psalm 147, verse 3, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So if you feel crushed in spirit, God's with you today. He also says he heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. In Revelation 21, 4, it says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness among the people. And news about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill, who had various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. And large crowds from Galilee, from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Does Jesus feel your pain? He absolutely feels your pain. He absolutely has sympathy, and he has empathy for every one of us, and he sees our need, he feels our pain, he knows exactly what we're going through. So we go back to this story with a young man and with Jesus, and he walks over to the coffin. And what does he do? He touched it. So the bearers, they step back, they stop what they were doing, and then Jesus says, young man, I tell you, get up. Young man, get up. And then the dead boy sat up and he began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Wouldn't that be pretty awesome to be there? That just gets me excited. Nain is a brand new place for me. I want to go to Nain. Anybody go to Nain? I want to go wherever Jesus is at. I want to go where he's at work doing the things that he's called me to do. I hope it's the same for you. That where Jesus is at, man, he changes everything. He changes the dynamics, doesn't he? He knows exactly what we need. And it may not be exactly answered exactly the way we think it ought to be, but I want it not to be how I want it to be. I want it to be what he wants it to be. Because he sees your need, he feels your pain. And then in this case, he goes over to the coffin and he touches, and then he says, hey, get up, young man. And the man sits up and he starts talking. Would that not floor you? Dude, I think I'd hit the ground right then. Like, oh my. He's probably saying I'm hungry. Can you imagine? <laughs> He'd been in that coffin. Probably talking about, there's no telling what, that, what was going around, on around him. But I guarantee you, if, if Jesus touches something, it's going to be healed. If Jesus speaks, it's going to have some amazing life that's put in it. And so here's what, so all that happens. The dead boy sits up. He begins to talk. Jesus gave him back to his mother. And this is what happens at the end. Great fear swept the crowd. Amazing things. Great fear swept the crowd. Jesus acts on our behalf. Jesus acts on this kid's behalf. And what did Jesus do? He does the same thing he does wherever he goes. He gives a look. He saw the need. He gives a word. Get up. He gives a touch. 
Just his presence is there. And he also created the ultimate model of ministry, and it's something that you and I can do for other people. Say, Reggie, I can't heal anybody. You sure can pray for them. You can sure meet their need where they're at with God's help that that God will say, I want to use you to encourage somebody. I want to use you to, to pray for somebody. We may not be able to work miracles on demand, but we can see people in their pain. I don't know about you, but I think about family time with Thanksgiving and family time at Christmas. I love everybody there. Are there some exceptional personalities there? Absolutely. Are there some EGR people there? You know what an EGR person is? It's an extra grace required. Absolutely, there's an EGR person. And some of you are going to face those, and if you don't know who those EGR people are, then it possibly could be you. So we come back to, and instead of being all upset and stressed and all that, what if we came and said, God, how can I see people in their need? How can I see what they're going for, going through? How can I pray for them? We can see people in their pain. We can feel their pain with them. Most of the time when you see somebody's really upset, aren't they usually going through something really bad? Don't they usually have a situation that we just don't see? I go to Walmart a lot. So when I was in Walmart the other day, I'm at the checkout and I'm finishing up and I look over and this man is being really mean to a cashier. He's just letting her have it. I remember he had a cane. I remember he looked very angry. And I said, God, do I need to step in? (laughs) I thought, I'm going to step in. I heard God say, no, you just step back. Just step back. Don't get in. And I started praying. But I was very upset that this man was so upset with this woman. And it finished pretty quickly. And I did say a word. I said, man, he was a jerk. And she agreed. (laughs) Probably shouldn't have said that, but that's Reggie. But then I started thinking, and God started putting, you don't know what's going on in his life. Not excusing what he did. I don't know what kind of pain he's in. He could have had a physical pain. I don't know what he's dealt with. I don't know. It doesn't give any excuses. But what you and I need to do is we need to look around and see the pain and see the need and pray for people and love people and care. How, what, how would Jesus do this? My first, my first thought seriously was I'd love to knock him out. I'll just be honest. You're a pastor. But that's when the Holy Spirit comes in and punches me really hard. He says, that's not okay. I just didn't like that he was being so rude to her. But then God goes a little further, and we start praying for people. We start seeing the need. We start seeing there's things going on. Somebody's hurting. And then we go, you know what? How would Jesus, how would Jesus handle it? We see people in their pain. We can feel their pain with them, and we can give people a look. And a word, we can give people a touch. And in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's what God calls us to do. Proverbs 22, 9 says, Whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. Matthew 5, 42 says, Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Matthew 25, 20, 35 through 40 says, For I was hungry, man. And this is, a, this is a huge passage right here. I want you to listen to God's word on this one. I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty, and we give you a drink? And when do we see you a stranger, and we welcome you, or naked, and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and we visit you? When did we see? Are we looking at the needs of other people? Are we seeing their pain? Are we feeling their pain? Are we praying for encouragement? Are we using our lips for encouragement? Because God wants every one of us to be his hands and feet use our words in the right way, love people like we're supposed to at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, and next year, and to do our part of what he's called us to do. Luke chapter 6 says, Given it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. With the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. With the measure that we use, it will be given back to us. Whew. So maybe today is the day that you need to meet Jesus. 
Maybe it's the day you need to say, God, I need help with this addiction. Maybe today's the day I need help with a financial situation. Today I need help with this physical pain or this emotional pain. I know one thing that I love doing every day, my family circle around. We're not super spiritual. I'm just telling you what we do. At the end of the day, after we do our devotion time, I say, what are you thankful for? And my daughter, she'll say something. And my wife, she'll say something. And we'll say, what are we thankful for? I'm going to encourage you to do that every day. What are we thankful for? In the Old Testament, there were Thanksgiving thankfulness verses in Ezra chapter 3 verse 11 says with praise and thanksgiving they sang to the Lord he is good and his love toward Israel endures forever and all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid Psalm chapter 7 verse 17 says I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness I will sing the praises of his name to the Lord most high Psalm chapter 9, verse 1 says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. Psalm 35, I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the thrones, I will praise you. Psalm 69, I will praise God's name in song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Psalm 100, 4 and 5 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with With praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalm 106, praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. So whatever's going on in your life, whatever need that you have, you need to know that God sees your need. He feels your pain and he will act on your behalf and on the behalf of other people. And he loves us to give him thanks and praise no matter what. The best thing we can do when we're going through pain is to give him praise. If you're going through pain, give him praise. Say, how do I do that, Reggie? You praise God. God, I thank you. I don't like this pain. I want you to come meet my need. I need your help, and I'm going to give you praise, and I want to give you thanks because you're God. Wherever you're at, whatever's going on, bow your heads, close your eyes. Let's talk to the king. When they play, they're about to play in just a few minutes. You can come and say, God, I just want to come down here at the altar. Altar's open. Anybody who wants to come, I just want to come give you praise. I need help. I know you see me. Today, I understand you see me. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you, God. You just start thanking God. I'm going to encourage everybody in this room. You just start, just start thanking God. Thank you, God, for friends. Thank you for worship. Thank you that I have a a home to go to. Thank you, God, that thank you, thank you, thank you. God, we give you praise. I know that you inhabit the praises of your people. Thank you for the people right now who are going to receive you, whether it's here or online. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for being Lord of all. If you've never invited Jesus into your life, you can pray this prayer with me and invite the King of Kings into your life. Thank you, Jesus, for how great you are. First of all, I want to say thank you for loving me. Just tell him, thank you for loving me. I have sinned against you. I have messed up. I have sinned. Please forgive me. Just ask him. Please forgive me. I can't do it on my own. And I invite you into my life. I want you to take over, and I want to follow you, however you want to tell him that. I want to follow you. Be my Lord. Please be my Savior. And I don't understand how it all works, but I want to, I want to do your will. Thank you for running after me. Thank you for meeting my need. Lift up your need to God. Thank you for meeting my need. And then you can say, God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. And say it again, God, thank you for loving me. Many of you, maybe you've never said that. Maybe you've never told God, thank you for loving me. He really does love you. And he'll meet you where you're at. Come down here with me if you want to. I'm going to be at the altar. The altar's open. Let's give praise to the king. Oh, wow.
will sing how the good days to fly. I stand and sing all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close and like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I will see the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful Oh yeah And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I have made Oh I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running so good sometimes in the moment it's very difficult to see your hand working but as we look back on our life we see your hand working perfectly all things together for our good that's what your word says you work all things together for good to those who love you and call according to your purpose so father we put our trust in you lord send us out of this place today with with a new faith with new life new peace and let us go into this week with, a, with an extreme attitude of gratitude. Father, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said a good amen. You guys have an incredible week, a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week.